Hey, what's up guys? On the job site here this morning, it's about 6.45. I've got a video I've been wanting to do on mitered casing because it's something I believe that you really have to have a good system on to make money and be profitable in new construction trim subcontracting. So in this video, I'm going to basically walk you through my whole process, try and give you some tips along the way. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything makes sense and it'll help you make some more money. So uh, I guess we'll get started here. So the first thing I want to point out, I cannot stress this enough, is logistics and job site setup. So the first thing you'll notice is here behind me, I've got my trim rack and it's loaded down with trim. All my casing is down here on the lower level. This whole thing was full two days ago. I've already cut most of it up, but new construction trim efficiency is all about reducing footsteps and efficiency of motion. So you want to have your trim in the house close to where your saw is going to be. Here in Indiana, it's crucial because we're in the spring right now and humidity. We don't want it laying on the floor in the garage. So I need to have it in here anyways. So I actually drop off this trim rack myself, get it in a good spot where I'm going to be able to set up my saw close by. And you can see how close that trim is to my rack. I'm not wasting a bunch of footsteps running back and forth to trim that's out in the garage that I've got to haul in or something like that. So number one is pay attention to logistics. Okay, the next thing, this is my miter saw station. I've got some videos on YouTube way back and some of the first videos I did were on these miter saw wings. You can check those out. But in new homes, typically your heights are only maybe three or four different heights of windows. What that means is you can batch cut uh, a ton of the windows. You don't have to pull out a tape and try and measure every single piece. That's a huge waste of time. Also, the widths are often the same, where you're going to have a bunch of windows that are the same width. Again, that means you can batch cut. So the way I approach uh, large new homes is I typically will measure an entire level. I usually don't do the whole house. I like to do one level at a time, but I'll take every measurement for every window and then I'll note uh, what I can batch cut on my cut list. So you can see right here, I always have my cut list right beside the saw. And I did the, uh, the main floor here yesterday and I've got probably 20 different windows and one, two, three, four different heights. So that's a lot of batch cutting, which leads me to the next thing, which is your stop block system. So this is a stop block that I, I actually came up with myself to solve the problem of the lack of efficiency I felt like I had with mitered casing. And what this consists of, this is a fast cap uh, block that goes with the best fence system, but then all the rest of this I actually made. So it actually consists of two pieces and this bottom piece slides. So why does it slide? I'm going to set it back up here where it needs to be. What this does is whenever you're doing picture framed windows uh, where you're going to have mitered casing, let me flip this around here, you always measure from your short points. That's kind of a problem. Uh, it's difficult to measure. Typically you would uh, bump the short point up against something that you can hook your tape on, measure down and mark it. That's inefficient whenever we can batch cut. So what this stop block allows me to do is I set my crosshairs on whatever the measurement is and then this is offset double the width of the casing. That means I can cut my miter here and then all I have to do is bump to the secondary bottom stop block and that automatically offsets double the width of the casing. So, so once I take my whole cut list of 20 windows here, I am never pulling out my tape measure again. Everything is done with the stop block. All I have to do is move it down, put it on my steel tape here, lock it down, cut my miter here, and then bump. So I might have uh, 16 different pieces like this 
I never have to pull out my tape measure and mark anything and they're always exactly the same. So I don't know why nobody makes this, but it's a huge, huge profitability and efficiency booster. So definitely consider investing in a good set of wings. The other thing you might ask, well, what if, uh, what if this changes? How do you calibrate it? This tape rides on a piece of magnet. So anytime I, I put my wings on again, I always recalibrate the tape to make sure it's perfect. And all you have to do is pull that tape up and slide it back and forth to get it exactly where you need it to be. So it's a really great system. All right, so we've got the logistics, we've got the cut station efficiency down. Now how are we gonna actually assemble the pieces? Um, that's a really good question. I am a huge believer in clam clamps for picture frame casing. Um, a couple other things, you know, what adhesive should you use? You can use just glue. Just glue doesn't do real great in my opinion. It's okay. It really needs a biscuit if you're just using regular glue. Um, my preference is Hyper. It's a hot, hot melt polyurethane adhesive. Um, we'll get into that more in a bit. Uh, but let's talk about these clam clamps first and why they're so important. So whenever you're cutting your casing on the miter saw, is it always perfectly straight? Is the stick of casing perfectly straight? Maybe if you're using MDF or something like that, it's pretty decent. In my world, I'm always using finger jointed poplar or clear poplar, which often is not straight. Here's the issue with that. Even if your miter saw is perfectly calibrated, if that casing isn't perfectly straight and it's got a little bit of a bow in it, you're only referencing off of about 12 inches, if that, on your miter saw whenever you're making that cut. So what that means is you can easily end up with it being off, I don't know how much, maybe a degree or so or whatever. But whenever you take your four pieces of casing in that picture frame and you start trying to pre-assemble that, you'll often find that you get to that last miter and it's not quite perfect. And the reason for that, if your saw is calibrated, is because the reference edge that you're cutting off of is not true and that just it can, it can be just on one piece that the cut is off or it can compound on multiple pieces. The reason you need clam clamps is because they actually have the strength to compress that miter anyways, even if it's not perfectly tight, maybe your heel is open a little bit, generally they will still have enough strength to compress that and, and get it tight and then away you go. So you're never having to try and tweak cuts that's why you need to use clam clamps. So now that we've got through that with the clam clamps, uh, the next thing is the assembly table station. Uh, definitely doesn't make sense. I'm, this is a really big house I'm working on right now. I have no idea how many sets of casing I've assembled, but you would not want to do all that on the floor. So I just take a sheet of plywood, throw it down, and this is where I'll put everything together um, really large pieces I'll do on the floor close to the opening where they're going to go but in general um, probably 90-95% of my casing sets will get assembled right here again look at look at where I'm working material saw assembly not wasting any footsteps so always keep that in mind always save footsteps hyper um, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this because it's probably a subject for a different video, but the reason I use Hyper is because it's the fastest. I can, uh, I can assemble each corner with the Hyper and by the time I come all the way around and do all four corners, the clamp is ready to be popped off on the first corner. It is a little bit of a temperamental product. But once you know its nuances, it's extremely strong and extremely efficient and it's well worth the money. Um, some guys biscuit and use, you know, tight bond one or whatever glue. 
My philosophy on that is why would I do that if I don't need to, if it doesn't add any value? So I don't want to have to carry around 20 different clam clamps. I actually only ever have four clam clamps on my van because that's all I need to do one window. And by the time it's glued with hyper, the clamps can be popped off and I move to the next window. With, um, with regular glue and biscuits, I always used to have 16 clamps. And at times, you know, you're having to adjust your workflow to, to make sure you're working around the dry time and whatnot. To me, it's just unnecessary. I do draw the line on, hype, on hyper at about three and a half inch casing. You might ask, well, how big a casing can you go before you need a tenon? And three and a half is the answer for me. So that, that's what I would recommend. But almost all of my work, I'm able to use hyper and it works great and I get great results. And I don't know of any, the reason I use this system is because I don't know of any system that is more efficient that'll give you better results. So that's, that's why I keep going back to it. So I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, it's probably about seven o'clock now, so I'm gonna get to work. Um, if you've got any questions, leave, uh, leave comments in the notes below. I'll have links to the tools that I use in the links below. Um, you can check those out. That's what keeps the channel alive. So thanks for supporting uh, and patronizing those links. If you've got any questions, again, let me know in the comments and I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching.